Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I want to talk about unit testing in minimal APIs and why at this point it's the only reason why I just can't blindly recommend to everyone to use minimal APIs because it appears that after the research I've done, testability, especially unit testability on the function level in minimal APIs is a second class citizen and I want to talk about it. And the second reason why I'm making this video is because Scott Hanselman through his blog and Damian Edwards through his Minimal APIs Playground project on GitHub, I'm going to link in both of them down below, they are pushing for something that they call unit testing, at least Scott is, but it's not. It's functional or integration testing depending on how you look at it, but it definitely isn't unit testing. In this video, I'm going to explain why it's not, why you should not use that and go around and say, oh, this is how you're unit testing minimal APIs. And also I'm going to show you how you can get around these limitations that they have currently, but do proper unit testing at the expense of developer experience. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let me show you a few things first. I have a minimal API testability project here and it has a few projects. First, I have this minimal API here which is just a normal minimal API that has been structured in a more nice way because minimal APIs don't need to be in one file. You can still split them in proper ways that make sense. And what I've done here is I have the customer service that I've made in previous videos as well, and I've split it into customer endpoint files. And then I am mapping these endpoints and I have functions that, for example, get all customers from the database, they get customer by ID, and if they're and null, then they return um, not found, else they return OK. So this is a properly working API. And what I also have here in the structure project is I have the opinionated way that I use to structure my minimal APIs, which is, again, a bit more opinionated than the previous one you just saw. You probably want to use this basic one, but I have this second one here for you in case you want to get inspired and make your own ways. Now, what I've done here in this minimal API is I wrote tests for it using what Scott and Damien call unit tests. And they look something like this. I've changed it a bit to make it more elegant because even that way that they're showing, I think it's very limited and very restricted. But what they're presenting to you is that you should use WAF or the Web Application Factory to write your tests. Now, I've talked about the Web Application Factory before, and actually their own documentation, if you go now on in their docs, they say that you should use this for integration testing. Integration testing is when your service is actually um, calling its dependencies properly, like databases or, or other dependencies, to see at the end-to-end -end flow of the request how it works. The reason why I'm very concerned that they even propose that is because the Web Application Factory will spin up a real, like, full-fledged API in memory that it's not exposed to the web and it's going to give you back an HTTP client to call that API. So only that specific client in memory will be able to call the real running API. The problem with that, and let's just see a test and just explain how, how this test would look like. I have a test here that will get a customer by ID and will return the customer when the customer exists in the database, presumably. So. I'm setting up an ID, I'm doing my arrangement, I'm creating a customer to return, I'm mocking the repository to return uh, for that specific ID, this specific customer, and then I'm creating a WAF test. So this is what I'm instantiating here. And then I'm using this approach to mock my actual service repository, the iCustomer repository, with this one, which is the mock proxy class. And then I'm creating this HTTP client here, like I said before. I'm calling this and it looks like an API call, right? The, the thing I want to test, and let me just take you to the, to the controller I'm testing or the endpoint, the method. I'm testing this thing. And let's add a breakpoint here because I want to debug it. So what I want to do is I want to call this with a fake or mocked repository and check if it returns properly not found or uh, OK. Now, when I do that, I'm getting a response back from this HTTP client. I'm deserializing the response text and then I'm checking the response itself. So if I was to execute this test and debug it and show you how it looks like, let's step through that so you can understand exactly what's going on here. First, I'm going to do my setup ceremony. Then I'm going to have this constructor here in my uh, WAF to mock or override the existing repository with a fake one. 
Then I'm going to create a client. And as you can see, this is the in-memory client. Then I'm going to call that in-memory running API. And again, this should take me here, which is the endpoint. And as you can see, this repo uh, iRepository is the substitute of iCustom repository. It's a mock, so our mocking works. And then I'm getting the customer back, the customer I just requested in my uh, test. And then I'm returning this. As you can see here, I have the response text. I'm serializing it into a customer, as you can see with the proper values. And then I'm asserting against it and the tests are passing. Now, the problem with this approach, which they are calling unit test, is that it's not because the scope is not the unit. When you are using an STP client and you're making the call to the endpoint, you're going to invoke the full pipeline of that request, meaning from the first piece of middleware, which includes authentication, authorization, if you have any custom things for logging, timing, anything will be invoked, not just the controller method that you want to isolate, not just your unit, but that whole piece of functionality and anything after that, which means that now you have to magically know everything that you need to mock in that middleware if you have any sort of middleware, which is basically impossible because you're going to keep fighting to identify what this library you imported might need to have mocked in order for your test to work fine. So technically you can get to a state of a unit test like feeling, but this is not unit testing. It, it just isn't. It's integration testing or functional testing, uh, depending on how far you go with mocking it. But selling it as such is just doing a disservice to the capability of WAF and to what unit testing is. And there's a reason why they're doing that. And there's also a reason why the examples that they're using are, are very selective and very straightforward and very simple. And that's because the API that they chose to go with doesn't allow you to do proper unit testing. Let me explain. If I go here, I have a web API, and this is the old style API, which has a controller. It's the exact same idea behind it. You have an iCustomer repository. I'm injecting it in the controller. This is the old way of doing things, the non-minimal API. And here's the exact same get by ID where you would have the repository being injected. You mock that and then you get the response back. And this returns iAction result. Now, iAction result is an interface where every other result object is inheriting from. So if I want to have an OK object result, which is what this OK method will return. And in fact, oh, I'm not using writer. I can't show you. Oh, I can't show you. This returns an OK object result here. So everything returns a specific class type. And this class type is public. It's a public class. OK object result, which extends object result. And this extends action result. Why is that important? Well, it's important because when you're writing unit tests for that sort of thing, your unit test looks like this. You have the system under test, which is the uh, controller itself, that the thing that you want to test. You have your mock here, and then you have your setup. So if I am to debug this, same setup, new ID, new customer. We mock the customer that this ID returns. Then you get the result because you're calling that uh, endpoint, that, that controller action. Then you get the object and you cast it to the type that you expect it to return. In this case, it's OK object result. And then you're asserting against their values. So if we are to see this in action, let me just quickly debug this test and show you exactly what's going on here. We have the setup. So we create the ID, we create the customer, and we mock the repository. The setup is done. Now we are acting. We're calling that endpoint. And we are only focusing on that block that you see now on your screen. There's nothing that happened before, no middleware, and nothing after, nothing. We're just testing the unit that's important. That's the definition of a unit test. Now, the repository is the mock thing. So if I am to step over it, it returns the customer who just instructed it to return and will return the OK object here. And then we're casting it here to this OK object result. And as you can see, it has uh, a status code, content types, the value itself, and we can assert that. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're getting the value and we're saying that the value should be equivalent to what we set up in the uh, arrange section over here. And the same with the status code. We do expect it to be 200. So that's what we do. And this is a proper unit test. This is how you would unit test the web API approach with a controller to check that the response is what you'd expect. Now, let's do that for minimal APIs. Now, to save some time, I'm going to import an existing project and hide the punchline from you. So let's see how it would look like. So here we have the exact same logic, but now we are calling that minimal API project, the one over here. Let me just close. This is annoying. 
um, the one where we have the endpoints in this static class and we're mapping them through the static method and we have these methods over here to call. Now, this might look internal, but if you see here, we expose the internals to the unit testing projects. So the unit testing projects are the only projects that can view internal labeled things. Even though they're external projects, they will treat them as public. So in case you're wondering, that's what's happening here. So let me just put a breakpoint here. I'm going to go back to the test over here. So let's see what we have. We have the arrangement, ID, same thing, new customer, me, um, and then customer repository, get by ID. Now, in case you don't know, one of the things or the standard equivalent to I action response that these functions return here in the map get method or any map method actually uh, is I result. I result is the equivalent of I action result, but I action result is for MVC, I result is for minimal APIs. And here's where the root of the problem lies. The team, for some reason, chose to go with the same naming on the result types. But let's see here what happens. So, what I would have like before would be the OK object result. Right, so you'd have something like this. Okay, object result here, and that's the result. And then I would import that. So let's let's go ahead and import this. And now, like I did before, I would have the okay object result, and then I would say value should let's import that. Here we go. Be equivalent to the customer, the thing I'm setting up upstairs. And the other thing I would have would be the status code. Right, the status code we expect it to be 200. Notice anything weird with this? Because I don't, right? That's That was my first experience. And then I'm running this. So I'm running this. And as you can see, the test is failing. Invalid cast exception. But why? Right? Well, it turns out, I think I'm hiding it with my face. It turns out that the I result is implementing different things. Even though the name is the same, the OK object result that the I result, the thing here, let me just explicitly show the type, the I result here is different. You see this one, and let me go here, is this dot OK object result, right? However, the one that the I result is implementing is under the HTTP namespace, completely different namespace. And that's not the problem. The problem is that this, and I can't, uh, that's, that's annoying. Let's do it here. If I copy that here and I paste it here. Oh, I have to do results here. Fine, Resol result. So it's under this. And if I go in it, as you can see, this is internal sealed. The sealed isn't the problem. The internal is a problem because now you cannot use it in your code, right? The thing that it's returning, and if you remember from the previous uh, thing, you know, the only the I result is public here. But if I go to the controller, I action result and everything that I action result is implementing, like the OK object result, not found result, and all those results, those are public. And their methods are returning those types, as you can see here, right? It's not returning I action result, the interface, it's returning the actual public method, meaning you can cast on it and use the values in that type in any way, not just for testing, anywhere. And this is where the big flaw is in this whole design, because there is no way for you to use that without either serializing the object in JSON and then have a DTO and mapping it into the DTO and checking, or using reflection. And this is true for anything that implements iResult. It's, it's really not nice. And I think that this is why they chose to show WAF as the only way of doing unit tests, sort of sell it like that, because there is no real alternative. Now, I'm going to show you an alternative, but it's going to be rejected by many of you, I'm sure. And to be honest, even I'm skeptical, but it's the only thing that you can realistically do without doing the serialization thing, which to me is a bit odd and tricky. Now, I just secretly added a few lines of code down in this file. I cut between the addition, but I'm going to show you how I'm dealing with the problem. So instead of doing this, I just keep the result here, the I result. So I'm going to change that to var. And what I want to do is check the value of a specific type. So I'm going to say, OK, object result value. And then I'm going to specify the type. So in my scenario, it's the customer. And of course, these need to be a result here. 
and now this this is fine and also get okay uh, result status code again that's a method and let's do the same here so we would do result dot get not found status code and then should be 404 and if I go ahead and run those tests now as you can see they're passing and in fact if I run all the tests in this project they are all passing now and this is proper unit testing. There's nothing in the middleware that is being called before or after the minimal API call and everything is contained within the unit, which is that function in my minimal API. The only thing I'm testing is this method and whether the object here, the return object is properly returned with the correct result. Now, how did I do that? Well, I secretly added a few extension methods and I understand you look at this and you're like, oh, wow, you're using reflection. Yes because there is not much you can do. We're at this point, we're locked. So the only thing I can do is actually use the objects in runtime through reflection and get the properties and then get their values with extension methods. And you know, this is generic enough for most cases. So you only have to write this type of thing only once and it will work. But then you shouldn't really be using reflection to access internal things because when those change, your tests will break and you're going to have to fix them again. So. I'm not a fan of this approach, but if you were to do unit testing, that's how it would look like. And that's why I'm making this video because I want you to understand the difference between unit and functional testing. Because if you go in and you think that WAF tests are the way to write unit tests going forward, then you're gonna be in for a very bad time with all those things you have to mock. And I'd highly recommend if those people don't treat it as a unit testing framework because it just, it isn't. It's a very handy tool. It's amazing for integration testing and even functional testing. It's not a unit testing thing. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. I hope you learned something here and I hope that we can actually get a better solution instead of this because I don't think that this is a true solution to the problem of unit testing and minimal APIs. And like I said in the beginning of the video, this is the only last thing that stands between me and the recommendation to everyone to just use minimal APIs. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.